Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com back to talk about more failing Volkswagen parts. Today, we're talking TDI camshafts. All right, so today we're gonna to be talking about camshaft failures on the 1.9 and two liter TDI engines. These were 2003-ish to 2005-ish in the Golf Beetle Jetta and the two liter was in the Passat. But before we get into the show, let's talk about the sponsor of the day, which is Deutsch Auto Parts. These guys are the Volkswagen Audi parts experts. Awesome service, incredible pricing, a ton of really great DIYs. In fact, not too long ago, Paul and I did a few videos together. So check them out at shopdap.com. All right, so as always, let's start off by talking about what a camshaft is. The camshaft is part of the valve train. And as the camshaft rotates around, you can see these lobes will move. Well, what these lobes do is they'll actually take and push a valve in and out. As the valve opens and closes, that either lets air into the engine, prevents air from leaving the engine, or opens on the exhaust side and it'll let air out of the engine. And with any luck, you won't have the kind of issue that this valve has right here. Now, on a camshaft like this, this is also going to have lobes that will open and close the fuel injectors as well. So you have, these are the lobes for the valves, and then these are the lobes for the injectors. Now we look at the cam lobes in two different ways. We look at how much it opens the valve, which is basically the height of the lobe. That's called lift. And then we look at how long it keeps the valve open for. That's roughly this distance here, and that is called duration. So the more it opens the valve, the more lift, and the longer it keeps the valve open, the more duration that it has. All right, so how does it work? Well, it keyed onto the end of this side is a gear. That gear is timed to a gear on the crankshaft. It actually rotates at half the speed of the crankshaft. So for every two rotations of the crankshaft, we get one rotation of the camshaft. And with one rotation of the camshaft, each cylinder will complete an entire cycle. That is compression, intake, power, and exhaust stroke. So how do these camshafts fail? Well, what happens is these lobes right here actually get ground down. You see in the video here, this is a new camshaft versus a worn camshaft. This camshaft we're looking at is pretty worn, and you can see almost like a peak on the lobe of the new camshaft, where the top of the lobe of the old camshaft is really, really flat in comparison. Two main things cause these camshafts to wear out. One is weak metallurgy of the camshaft, and the other one that I've seen is poor maintenance or incorrect engine oil. We've seen a lot of TDIs that have had the wrong oil in it, and that can cause damage to the engine. It doesn't provide the right lubrication. It doesn't provide that film of oil between the lobe of the camshaft and the lifter, which is gonna be right underneath. So how do we know we might have a bad camshaft? Well, there's three main symptoms that you get from camshaft failure. One, we get a noise from the top end of the engine. You can hear it plain as day if you're listening right on top of where the camshaft is located. We can get a check engine light. I've seen airflow meter faults be caused by failures of the camshaft. We can get fuel-related faults if the lobe wear is caused on one of the injector lobes for the camshaft and we can get low power or basically almost no power. And the reason is, as this camshaft lobe starts to wear down, it won't open the valve all the way and it won't hold it open for quite long enough. So less air into the engine is gonna mean less power. So how do we diagnose a failing camshaft? Well, once we've gotten to the point where we feel confident that we have some of the symptoms of a failing camshaft, really the best thing to do, in my opinion, is to just go ahead and pull the valve cover. It doesn't take that long to take the valve cover off, and once the valve cover's off, the camshaft is basically fully exposed. Now you may have to rotate the engine around a little bit to get full examination of all the lobes of the camshaft, but that's really easy and you'll be able to see each individual lobe on the camshaft. You can also pretty much see the lobes of the injectors as well. And a good visual inspection is really your friend here. You can even see on this lobe of the camshaft that uh, this is where the injector rides, that there's wear and tear there as well. So to me, pulling the valve cover is really the most fail-safe, surefire way to identify camshaft damage. 
Now, is this a DIY? This is a pretty big job. You know, you're, you're dealing in the timing circuit, so you're taking the timing belt off, you're taking the gear off. There is a special press slash puller tool that uh, you need to pull the, not the gear, but the piece behind it off. As well as we're gonna have to do some measurement when it comes to putting the injectors back on. There's a rocker arm that actually pushes the injector down, and we need to set the depth of that properly in order to make sure that we set our vehicle timing and everything back up. We want to make sure that we take our time and follow all the steps in the repair manual. So this isn't a job for the beginning DIYer, but if you have some car knowledge and you've done a lot of things in the timing circuit, you probably can pull this one off. Other than that puller tool, there's not a ton of special tools that you need. You do need to lock the cam and the crank into position as well when we're dealing with timing on one of these 1.9 or 2 liter engines. Also, you're going to want to consider replacing the lifters depending on if there's damage to the lifters or not. Generally, I've never seen any kind of damage to, uh, to the valve. It's really only the lifter. Unless it wears all the way through, then that's a possibility. But a lot of times if it's worn all the way through, you may have even more damage like to the cylinder head. This is also a great opportunity to go ahead and pull the fuel injectors out and replace the seals on the end of the injectors as well. As far as average miles to failure, this is a pretty high mileage failure. I've seen most of them fail over 100,000 miles. That's not to say that they don't fail under 100,000 miles. That's just what I've seen based on the number of these camshafts wearing that I've seen. For the most part, we've seen these in the Golf Beetle and Jetta family car, not so much in the B-Series, not so much in the Passat, but actually the video that you guys saw earlier comparing the two camshafts, that one was out of a 2004, I think, Passat. So there you guys have it, all about the failure of the 2.0 and 1.9 liter TDI camshaft failures. Again, this was 2003-ish to 2005-ish. Special shout out to my buddies at Apex Tuning for saving this camshaft for me. Thanks, fellas. I really do appreciate you guys setting that aside for me so I can do this video for everybody. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, throw it down in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw out a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at homeowlmechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously, right here on YouTube. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. Uh, drink of the day is a gin and tonic. Well, it's probably like 90% water at this point, but what do you do?